Chris, I know a lot of educators would be interested in using this course, um, but it's a big course, and could you explain how they might use it in their classes? Yeah, so we've put this course together uh, not only with uh, students in mind, but also with, with instructors, um, whether those are secondary teachers or university instructors who might want to use some or all of this in their own residential or online teaching. Uh, but like you said, it's a big uh, class full of material, lots of different themes, lots of different subject matter. So we wanted to do a very brief video for you uh, to figure out how you might adapt this and use this in your own classrooms. So one of the first questions to think about is what kinds of classes is this useful for? Um, and obviously, uh, if you are teaching a class on US history uh, or on the Philippines or Asian history, uh, this is going to be valuable. But we also thought about this as an important moment in world history. Um, it's certainly a world history class, a world cultures class that focuses on sort of cultural dynamics of exchange and communication. Uh, could also find some useful material in here. Um, and there are also people um, who are going to be learners experiencing anthropology for the first time as a scholarly discipline, who might also want to know sort of the, the history of that discipline, its origins. Um, who might in particular find our unit on uh, visualizing the work of Dean Worcester um, and, and an interesting introduction to, to that story. But I mean, I think one thing we've discovered is that this material does not teach itself. Um, and so that's one thing that I would say is most important from my own experience and how I plan to use this in my residential uh, learning experiences and what I would recommend to anyone else is that uh, it takes um, some time for pre-screening and really sort of as a, as a teacher and instructor figuring out you know what parts of this are useful but also what you might need to do to get your students ready to handle this material uh, intelligently and respectfully right we spent a lot of time in this in this module thinking about where these images are coming from what they show the difficulty of some of them uh, and just as we've done that in this in, in the online course here and we also think that anyone who's using it in their own classrooms might also want to kind of reiterate those lessons. What kind of skills could students learn from this? Right, and that I think is, is important. I think mm -hmm. that this is a, a class that doesn't just teach content mm -hmm. um, about uh, American history and Philippine history uh, 100 years ago. It's designed to kind of equip students and, and adult learners and, and everybody with the kinds of skills uh, for doing visual analysis um, and this can be important, uh, and also th skills as a historian, right? Mm -hmm. um, and in particular, you know, a lot of times uh, when we are trying to sort of fit material like this into a crowded school year um, where there might not be room, you need to figure out, well, what is this, uh, what historical thinking skill might this develop? And for me, I think in particular, uh, these modules are useful for teaching students about evidence. Um, and uh, the critical use of evidence is one of the fundamental skills of historical analysis. You have to be able to identify uh, who created this, understand questions like purpose and point of view, um, and then also understand sort of what the evidence shows and doesn't show. How do you turn sort of this evidence into an interpretation of the past? Um, and that's things that we did all the way through this course, um, and that's something that I think would be a skill that, could, that can be taught through this course. What's your advice for students who are going to be encountering many images, some of which are very challenging? I think th this is another important uh, thing to think about in teaching, and that's part of, again, what we tried to do in our uh, sort of online modules here was to encourage users to really slow down, uh, to look carefully at images, uh, to think about them, to note what they're seeing, what they're feeling in response to the image, uh, what they're wondering, you know, what's, what's puzzling them? What don't they know after looking at an image? And one of the, our hopes for this is that by putting a lot of the historical content, a lot of the skills development online, we can flip the classroom, right? And it will give you time in the classroom to do more collaborative, hands-on, group work, reflection exercises, uh, that if you tried to cram all this into one 40-minute unit, might, might, take, might not have enough time for the reflection part. Um, so that would be my number one recommendation is, uh, you know, with whatever audience you're sort of trying to teach to is slow, slow them down, which means slowing yourself down as an instructor, too. 
What's a flipped classroom exactly? So a flipped classroom is, is when, uh, when sort of, you know, some of the work of content delivery, lecturing or sort of you know, telling students this is what happened, um, it takes place outside of the classroom. Um, with students watching the, the video online video modules, students looking through the images, um, doing that ahead of time um, outside the classroom, um, which then can hopefully free up more time in class for sort of more of the, the give and take exchange. So the teachers should be assigning them to go through in the MOOC on their own independently and then come in prepared. Right. Having done yeah. Work. So I think that, you know, it's sort of a couple things. You have mm -hmm. to sort of get the students ready to, to look at these images mm -hmm. um, by themselves um, in, in the online environment. Give them the time to do that at home and then make sure that there's structured space in the classroom for thinking, reflecting, wondering, discussing, um, and then at the end thinking about what they thought about, right? mm -hmm. documenting their process. What did, they, what did you learn? Mm -hmm. you know, what were you wondering? What do you know now? How did you think about skills? How did you think about the Philippines? Um, and then also, I guess finally, sort of encouraging people to, um, to move from, from historical to contemporary issues around images, photographs, visuality, cartoons. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, this, this is going to be different in every educator's classroom, but you could imagine a very contemporary exercise where students look for photographs or cartoons today uh, and try to uh, analyze those in the, some of the same ways for today that we've done for, for once from the past. Are there any warnings that you would want to give to the teachers should prepare their class before they start this work? Like I said, I, th I think it's important to share with the students mm -hmm. um, some of the same warnings uh, and, and guidance, I think is maybe the better term, that we've given to the users of, of this course, right? That, uh, you know, to sort of that there will be difficult images, um, and, uh, and there are images, there are also images that include uh, ra racist language uh, that might be you know, worth uh, considering for the classroom you are teaching in. Um, there are also uh, some images of nudity that, uh, you know, depending on the age group you're working with, the students you're working with, you might need to think, think wisely about. So that's why I think it's important that instructors really pre-screen the material and, and use as much of it as fits for, 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 for your own classroom in the ways that you want.